Figuring out how to factor trinomials like this into two binomials can be tricky and downright frustrating at times, especially when the leading coefficient is not 1. Seriously, you don't need to guess and check these because there's a little known and surprisingly easy algorithm for mindlessly factoring these complicated trinomials. What we're about to do is a reverse FOIL process, so let's quickly review how to multiply two binomials with the FOIL process. The word FOIL, F-O-I-L, helps us organize the process into four multiplication problems. The first terms get multiplied, and 2 times 3x, of course, is 6x squared. The outside terms, 2x times 2, those multiply to be 4x. And then you have the inside terms, 3x times 1, and of course that's 3x. And then the last terms, 1 times 2, and that equals 2. At the end, you can often combine those middle terms into a single term. 4x plus 3x is 7x in this case, and you get your final answer, which is a trinomial. Now, you're watching this video because you want to understand how to factor. That's where you undo what we just did, the multiplication that we just did. So we want to find those original two binomials that multiply to give us this trinomial. So given our trinomial, we grab the leading coefficient, which is 6, and the constant at the end, and we multiply those two numbers together. So 6 times 2 is 12. The next step is to look at all the ways that we can make 12 through multiplication. So 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 4 times 3. Now just ask yourself which of those pairs of numbers adds to be the middle term, which happens to be 7x. Aha, it's 4 plus 3. 4 plus 3 is 7. So let's split the middle term into 4x and 3x and rewrite the entire polynomial, but now with four terms. Next, we follow the grouping method process for factoring, so let me remind you how that works. You group the first two terms together, and you find the greatest common factor, the GCF of those two terms, just all by themselves. Of course, it's 2x. And then inside the parentheses, we write what's left behind after factoring out the GCF, which is 3x plus 2. We've rewritten the first two terms, 6x squared plus 4x, as 2x times the quantity 3x plus 2. Okay, now group the second two and do the same. Factor out the GCF. The question is special because the GCF on these two is just 1, so I'm going to write a 1 on the outside of the parenthesis, and on the inside would be 3x plus 2. Now, what do you notice about the two groupings? They have what's called a common binomial, 3x plus 2, which we factor or divide it out, leaving two terms to go in the second set of parentheses. The 2x is left on the first group, or the blue group, so we place it inside the parentheses. And then the positive 1 is left on the second, or that red group, so we place it inside the parentheses as well. Holy cow, we're done. Seriously, that's all there is to this. We just split 6x squared plus 7x plus 2 into 3x plus 2 times 2x plus 1. And we did it with absolutely no guessing, no checking. We just followed a simple process. It's kind of cool. So let's try this again with even bigger numbers, make sure we understand it. What factors might be hiding in here? That's our goal here. Do you remember the, what the first step was? Okay, so we take the first number, also called the leading coefficient, and the last number, the constant, and we multiply them. 20 times negative 6 is 120. Now ask yourself, what multiplies to be 120? and adds up to be 7, which is what that middle term happens to be in this problem. Is it negative 12 times 10? That equals negative 120, but negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2, so nope, that doesn't work. What about negative 6 times 20? That makes the negative 120, and if you add them up, it equals 14. Oh, nope, that's not the combination. What about negative 8 and 15. When added, they make, there it is, the positive 7 that we're looking for. So we use that combination to split up the middle term 7x into negative 8x and 15x. Now, a lot of students ask me, it really doesn't matter which order you put these in. Uh, believe it or not, we'll still get the same answer in the end.
Okay, continuing on. So let's bring down the other terms and then begin the grouping method. The first two terms have a GCF of 4x, leaving behind 5x and negative 2 inside the parentheses. Always check your work by doing that distributive property real quickly and just make sure that you did your factoring right, of course. Uh, looking at the second group, the GCF is positive 3, leaving behind 5x minus 2. And there it is, a common binomial again. We factor it out and then we write what's left behind in the second set of parentheses. So in the first grouping, 4x is left behind and in the second group, 3 is left behind. So 4x plus 3 is the second binomial in the factorization. Using this algorithm, we quickly and efficiently factored a crazy looking trinomial without any guessing and checking. And it wasn't that hard, was it? I hope you found this video useful. So do me a favor and like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Okay, until next time.